Whether or not Johan understands, this is where we're living. Because he can't go to the United States without me, and if I don't want to go, I don't want to go. So tu sueño no es verdad. Sueño americano no es real. Did she really just say that? 90 Day Fiance The Other Way is back, and on top of Danielle crushing Johan's American dream, which rubs me the wrong way, we also get to know Gabe, the franchise's first transgender male, and he comes in hard. Bada bing, bada boom, you have a bulge right there. Plus, there are a few must-see moments that have me thinking, wow, this person is getting scammed, used, played, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> Basically, we're running through all my first impressions of these couples and the family members attempting to support them on this unique journey. When Chris told me that she was going to go to Columbia and marry a lady, it was really kind of a big surprise all at one time to me. I'm a devout member of the church, but I believe it's not our place to judge. It's Heavenly Father's place to judge. She's been through a lot of things, and I hope this will bring her happiness. Mm, that's love. Let's get into it. Hey 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. With every new season, especially with new cast members, just to be real, I know it takes us a minute to care to actually get into their storylines. But if you are gonna go on this wild adventure with me this time around, there are a few things that went down during the season four premiere episode that we need to talk about. First, let's kick things off with a cast member that has me the most concerned, to say the least. I'm Jen, and I'm 46 years old, and I live in Stillwell, Oklahoma. Jen lives on her family's farm with her mom and her brother, and she's engaged to 32-year-old Rishi, who lives in India. I have a track record of falling for the wrong guys. I would choose guys who were good-looking and very charismatic. But in terms of a long-term partner, they were not what I needed. Jen met Rishi on a trip to India in the hotel lobby. And she claims, I'm assuming because of her past, she wasn't that into him at first. Do that again. But the more time they spent together on that trip, the more she came around. And a month later, he proposed. Of course he did. Jen said yes, but she admits she's not sure why. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what made me fall for Rishi. But I don't know, I just, I knew he was the one. It was completely out of the blue. We hadn't discussed the future, we hadn't discussed me leaving or staying or anything like that. But I did not hesitate at all before saying yes. It just felt right. Boy, if I did everything that felt right. And just the fact that he proposed without them talking about the future, in my opinion, that's a red flag. We hadn't discussed the future. We hadn't discussed me leaving or staying or anything like that. It's not romantic, it's irresponsible. Hold yourself. Yeah, very good. When it comes to Rishi, he apparently has a law degree and a master's degree. But at some point, he discovered personal training and modeling is his passion. Being a model and a fitness trainer, I have a lot of attention from the woman. <sighs> Feeling exhausted? Yeah. <sighs> I don't need to give any effort. They approach themselves to speak with me. Swing. Give me pose. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> and oh yeah, he's obsessed with his hair. I love my hair. I'm the only one here in my city who has a long hair with the curl. It's my image, basically. Some people say <laughs> that I look like an Indian Jesus. <laughs> Are you starting to see why I'm a little bit concerned here? Okay. In cases like this, I would love to know who applied to be on the show. Rishi or Jin? It can say a lot. Anywho, after not seeing Rishi for two years due to COVID, Jen is preparing to move to India in a week, even though she spent about 45 days with him in total. <laughs> that is 90 days for you. Don't act like you don't know. And based off the season trailer, I'm wondering if Rishi has any real intention of marrying Jen. I'm damn sure they will force him for the arranged marriage. They are looking already. They were in talk. They were not confirmed. I just keep saying over and over, just be honest with me. 
is she? What would Jesus do? Okay, bad joke. Moving on. Some people say that I look like an Indian Jesus. Let's get into Danielle, a 42-year-old high school history teacher and yoga instructor in New York City. She's married to 32-year-old Johan, but he lives in the Dominican Republic where they met. He was a personal trainer at the hotel that I was staying at, and he was absolutely beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, Johan would have caught my eye too. Now, these two aren't new to the 90 Day Universe. They were part of the Love in Paradise spinoff. But I know half of y'all didn't watch that show, and it's all good because honestly, I didn't either. So a quick catch up. After knowing each other for only five months and spending a total of three weeks together, Danielle and Johan tied the knot. And in the years since, they've been living separately. Until now, because Danielle has decided to pack her bags and move down to the DR and build a life with her man. I feel like New York is a toxic boyfriend. You can't get away from him. You love him so much, but you know that he's making your life worse. Wow, what an analogy. This episode, Danielle returns to the Dominican Republic to look at apartments before her big move. But there's a problem. Johan has no clue that Danielle is planning to permanently move to the Caribbean, a place he's trying to leave so he can create a better life for himself. He really wants to come to New York. He doesn't want to stay here. I would prefer to come here. Porque aquí yo trabajo y, y no me da para nada. Todo dominicano quiere ir a los Estados Unidos. And yeah, this is giving me vibes that Johan is using Danielle, at least just a little bit. Johan doesn't even take his wallet out if I'm around. He just expects that if we buy something, I'm going to pay for it. It's something even one of her yoga students brought up. I'm afraid that he's a sanky panky. <laughs> a sanky panky is a man who works at an, a resort and is looking for tourists to come and, you know, provide them with money and goods and visas and take care of them and their families. So that's my biggest fear. I'm starting to wonder if it's Danielle's too. You have to find an apartment is like the most important thing to me. I have to somehow explain to Johan that we're never going to New York. <laughs> We have a lot to do. Come on. In case it wasn't clear, Johan is still working on his English, so he had no clue what she just said. Anyway, once they get rolling in the car, Danielle confirms Johan's worst fear. She doesn't want to go back to the U.S. ever. Quiero vivir siempre aquí. And then she just straight up crushes. I can't say what I want to say, but she, she stumps on the American dream. All because of her experience in New York, as if New York is the only place to live in America. Mi amor, tú no es estúpido. No. Escúchame. Mi casa, cuatro mil dólares por mes. Solo por la casa, sin comida, sin caro. Necesito insurance por todo. As Danielle complains about New York being expensive, which I think we all can agree is true, she also doesn't seem to take into account the realities of life in the Dominican Republic. Johan tries to tell her that people work hard for years just to earn enough to live day by day. Whether or not Johan understands, this is where we're living. Because he can't go to the United States without me, and if I don't want to go, I don't want to go. Aquí es mejor. So tu sueño no es verdad. Sueño americano no es real. Personally, I think what she said is messed up. For one, I don't think it's right to kill someone else's dream because of your negative experience, scammer or not. And two, it's clearly not the truth. The American dream is real. This country is not perfect by far, but people have come here and built something out of nothing. Danielle might really be over New York, but I'm wondering if her wanting to live in the DR for good is more about proving to herself, or maybe the world, that Johan is not using her for a visa. Just a thought. All right, next up, Gabriel from Florida and Isabel from Colombia. As I mentioned before, Gabe's making franchise history as the first transgender star. And he owns this business, which, if I'm to be honest, took me by surprise at first. I was like, he's making what? Muchas penises. You can see it's already starting to puff up. I created a brand. It is underwear that already have a bulge in them. Bada bing, bada boom, you have a bulge right there. 
But that's why having an open mind is so important because what some might view as a joke is a solution to a real problem people experience. He hit an entrepreneurship gold mine with this idea. He filled a need. I created a brand called Get More Proud Wear. It is underwear for female to male transgender people who have not had their bottom surgery yet, which is swapping out what genitalia you have. If you're a trans guy, just knowing that there's nothing there and there's nothing under, it's, it's, it sucks. So trans person, female to male, they have to wear a packer, which is like a fake limp penis. And then they have to wear a harness to hold it in place. And then they have to put their underwear on. And that is a lot of work and it's heavy. Gabe explains that he came up with the idea after this embarrassing moment. Packers fall out your pants. One day when I was younger, I was actually swimming. And lo and behold, guess what? I'm swimming this way and my sock is swimming that way. And I'm like, oh crap. So I'm just like, oh, that's not mine. I'm like, oh no, we're not doing this today. Or Soham says, quote, more power to him. And this might be good advertising for his business as well. Great point, Aura. More eyes means more money. And in this case, more confident people in the world. And for those of you who might be struggling with the idea of this, something I'm learning in life overall is that there are some things that you are never going to fully understand. And it's important to have enough humility to make peace with that. It's a very hard life being trans. It's not like one day you just wake up and you're like, oh, you know what, I'm trans. No, it's a feeling that you feel your entire life. Gabe goes on to open up about his personal journey. When I was younger, I wanna say in kindergarten, my cousin had a friend that dressed like a boy. Once I found out that, you know, girls can wear boy clothes, I started with basketball shorts and I just wore basketball shorts every single day. When I was 16 years old, I came out as lesbian because I didn't know that you can change your gender. I didn't know anything like that. All I know is, oh, I feel like a boy, but you know what? I date girls. Oh, I'm that. When I was little, that's what I just thought it was, you know? In his early 20s, Gabe learned about transitioning and he made it happen. I'm trans. Once upon a time, I was a girl and now I'm a whole man. A whole man, because I already got my surgery. And when it comes to his love life, Gabe's business took him to Colombia, where he was looking for a supplier. That's when he met Isabel. I was like, damn girl, she fine. Like she is so beautiful. Like I'm like, ugh, like my heart is like melting. We definitely had immediate chemistry. Isabel is a mother of two, an 11 year old and a 16 year old. And she and Gabe hit it off the first night they met. But the next morning, Gabe knew he had to tell her that he is transgender. And here was her response. So I ended up telling her through text messages and she tells me it's okay because I just see you as a man. And at that point I was like, oh yes, like this is like, it couldn't have worked out in my favor like any better. Yeah. Look, I'm not too well versed on this topic, so I'm not gonna speak much about it, but I have heard stories where people find themselves in situations that turn out to be the complete opposite. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but in some cases, people have lost their lives when they chose to speak out about their truth. So yes, Gabe is lucky to have found Isabel, and they have been together for over a year now. I'm just hoping she has his best interests at heart. A couple months after we met, I started renting an apartment in Medellin, Colombia. <laughs> and that's when Isabel moved out of her family's house and in with me in Medellin. I've been going back and forth ever since, but now I'm gonna move there permanently. And I'm proposing to her because I cannot be away from this woman. Hmm, this sounds sweet, but there are, shocker, some red flags here. According to Gabe's sister, he doesn't make the best decisions when it comes to dating. She says he's impulsive. Mind you, she's saying this as he gets a tattoo of Isabel's name. Are you gonna get rid of the other girlfriend's name or? The other name, yes. We're gonna black it out. Malcolm said he'll black out the name for me. This is very much Gabe. 
you fall in love after a week, and then boom, you're living with someone, you're tattooing their name on you. This How is many just, girlfriends did I live with? You've lived with what, like two or three, but then you also move, but then oh. you also move them into our mom's house. Oh, she is telling all his business. Then Gabe's sister gets blunt. Gabe moving to Colombia to be with a woman is a stupid decision. He has a tendency to jump the gun and rush into things. It can get exhausting. Clearly, she sounds tired of it, for sure. And so what about her kids? You said that you didn't want to date someone with kids after your last relationship. Whoa. You said that you would never do it again. Yeah, but her and kids are, are big. How old? 16 and 11. Okay. So it's they take care of themselves. So what does that mean? You can just disregard them? No, it means that I don't have to, like, babysit them. You don't want to help her with her kids? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not going to help. Of course I'm going to help her, because, like, we all live together. But I'm saying that she's motherly and provides for her children. But you pay the bills. Yeah. So who's providing? If I had some tea, I would sip it. Snap, snap. Gabe's sister is not playing. She came through and had to remind him of a few things. After that reality check, she did soften up and let him know that she's going to miss him. Of course, obviously, I love you. I want the best for you. I love you too. If if it doesn't work out, I'll be I'll be here, and you can say I told you so. <sighs> Allowing family to learn hard lessons on their own is tough. Hopefully, Gabe and Isabel prove her wrong, though. Since we're on the topic of family members doing their best to support the 90 Day Newbies, I want to quickly chat about this touching moment between Chris and her mom before we wrap things up. My name is Chris. I'm from Haleyville, Alabama. I'm 40 going on 20, because that's how I feel. I'm, I feel like I'm 20, and I look like it too. <laughs> Chris, a mother of two, is a free spirit and she's moving to Colombia in a week to be with her girlfriend, Jamie, who she's never met in person. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. They met online, and this is Chris's first serious same-sex relationship. I've only had a couple of relationships with females. I don't really call them relationships. We were intimate. It was just that I never went out in public with them because it was embedded in me at a very young age. You know, this is wrong, this is wrong. And my fear kept me miserable for years. And I'm finally happy. And I would not change it for anything. All right, now that you know her backstory, I want to show you what really impressed me. Chris is talking to her mom about her move. And when the producer asked her mom how she feels about Chris having a relationship with another woman, considering they live in what's viewed as the Bible Belt, she says this. When Chris told me that she was going to go to Columbia and marry a lady, it was really kind of a big surprise all at one time to me. She never brought a lady home to meet me, never spoke of it at all. I'm a devout member of the church, but I believe it's not our place to judge. It's Heavenly Father's place to judge. She's been through a lot of things, and I hope this will bring her happiness. For me, that was such an unexpected and refreshing response. It goes back to what I mentioned earlier about being okay with not understanding or even agreeing with certain things. But having enough humility to say, I don't know it all, but I do know that I'm going to lead with love. That is what's in my control. How someone else chooses to live their life is not. After all, the majority of us are out here just trying to do our best. <sighs> all right, well, there is a couple I was hoping we would meet in the first episode, but I guess we have to wait. Debbie, who is 43 years older than her Moroccan boyfriend, Osama. I am looking forward to hearing their love story. You're, you're creepy, man. I'm creepy, I'm bad, I'm ugly, I'm I'm son of a bitch, okay? He took my trust and he urinated all over it. I'm ashamed of you. You're weak. <sighs> all right, 90 Day Fans fam, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.